Bonjour, Borowskis. Ever wonder who the most unhinged Canadian is? Let me introduce you to the most egocentric man to ever live, Sam Hughes. Sam Hughes had a fitting job for his headstrong personality, acting as Canada's Minister of Defense during World War I. His position as the Minister of Defense was gained through morally sound means, by guilting and coercing the then Prime Minister Robert Borden into letting him join. And you'll quickly come to learn, no one says no to Gaston. Sam Hughes is known for his poor temperament and choice words to anyone that would listen. Or wouldn't listen, he didn't care. Even the Prime Minister wasn't safe, who Hughes regularly called a sissy. Since Canada was still directly under British rule, they had to follow along with whatever Britain was getting up to. If Britain declared war, Canada was dragged along too. With the beginning of World War I unfolding, Britain took a little to confirm that they'd be joining the war since, you know, big commitment. While the Brits hummed and hawed, Sam Hughes was in his office taking the uncertainty like a champ. The British. The flag. You, take down the Union Jack. We're not British anymore. Climb the pole or I'll... Sir, sir, we can't do that. Do I look like I? Much of that morning consisted of trying to persuade Sam Hughes into surrendering his hostage of the Union Jack, which I don't know how, but they got it back from him. Thank goodness Britain sent their ultimatum the next day, or else the first battle of war probably would have been that office. With war being officially on the horizon, Sam Hughes was finally set free from any sense of rationality. As a colony, Canada was expected to provide resources, primarily food due to England already receiving resources prior to the war, and with the prairies being Canada's unlimited breadstick basket. Because what else are those hillless provinces good for? But let me give credit where it's due, Quebec did provide quite a lot too. Not men, they hated the British, understandably, but instead, four million pounds of cheese. Hmm. For troops, the plan was to send Canada's tiny little army of around 3,000 men. But we need to ask, what would Sam Hughes do? Well, he'd insult the entire French-Canadian population with an encore directed towards the British crown, and then end it off with completely remaking the Canadian military from scratch and somehow getting an initial 30,000 recruits for his new army. And when was this happening? Yes, right as war was starting. Part of his new, and unnecessary plan, was to build a new training camp at Valcartier. Sam Hughes built this camp in the predominantly French province of Quebec, who he previously called a bunch of brutes among other things. As you can imagine, not many Frenchies joined the war. Valcatio is very much a product of Sam Hughes. No one knew what was happening, there were too many higher-ups and ratio to troops, and the YMCA tent kept playing the same movies over and over again. When Hughes received complaints about the camp, he personally dealt with them. Like when the head of the Humane Society came to say, Uh, hey there bud, uh, maybe treat your horses with a bit more respect there, eh? In response, Hughes very calmly picked him up and yeeted him out of his office while insulting his entire bloodline. Hughes ruled over Valcatia with an iron fist. He'd ride around on his horse yelling long outdated orders to troops who already had no clue what was happening. But what they did learn to understand very quickly was that it was impossible for Hughes to ever be wrong, leading to a lieutenant who Hughes addressed as a captain to be promoted, legally, on the spot. Do is like, nah, you're a little off, man. You are a complete idiot. How could someone like you even make it into the military? A snail could fight the Germans better than you, you. Anyways, smell you later, Captain Idiot. You're doing a fine job out there. When the Canadians showed up to England, it was pretty easy to tell who the father was. They did whatever they wanted, whenever they felt like it. They disregarded all British customs because they were primarily just a bunch of farmers and regular citizens. Their mentality was that you should treat everyone like you're watching the game together because you wouldn't go and just salute your cashier. No! You'd invite him over for some beers, learn that he supports the Montreal Canadiens, and then get into a fist fight in the snowbank. Pfft, gosh. Those Brits had no manners towards Canadian culture. During the war, Sam Hughes had plenty of ideas festering away. One of his plans was to use military funding to buy ads in America to recruit Americans, who weren't in the war yet. Was this approved? 
Well, the only approval Sam Hughes needed was from someone he considered competent. Sam Hughes. Only reason this got out was because Borden started receiving complaints about how Canada didn't respect American neutrality. In that time, Hughes managed to recruit an entire battalion. He managed to hold his position till 1916, somehow in 1915, becoming knighted? How'd he stay for so long? Pure willpower. He instilled the fear of himself into those around him, especially Borden. This poor man was terrorized by Hughes on almost a daily basis simply being too scared to fire him. Because, according to Sam Hughes, everyone loved him, and if you didn't, you were incompetent. When it came down to it, it took Borden over a week to come to a decision on if he'd actually fire him. His sacking brought a larger sigh of relief than if they declared the war over right then and there. That didn't stop Hughes, though. He tried to ruin Borden's reputation, but pff, no one cared, because, well, they've met Sam Hughes. Hughes went out as one might imagine, Laying on his deathbed, a priest came to do priest stuff before people died, asking Hughes priestly death questions. Hughes responded, Pretty soon I'll be sitting on the right hand of God, and I'll be able to arrange things all right enough. Which I'm pretty sure means he's equating himself to God and or Jesus, so... Hope that went well. At the age of 68, he passed away in August of 1921. I hope now that instead of thinking of cute little Canadians with their cute little hats, you think of the completely unhinged man that was Sam Hughes. Anyways, ciao!